as the 2021 fall season continues to disappoint me, <laughs> with many of the series' overall scores steadily declining, one of the few that has recently consistently been good is Megaton Q Musashi. Sadly, it's a series no one is watching, and the game itself did terrible in Japan. Still, it hasn't stopped the anime from being great. At this point, as many of the series are approaching their end, the only four I could really appreciate are this, Awesome Ranking, Heike Monogatari despite it being rushed, and Tessano for how hilariously bad it is, though the writing is great. Lupin the, Lupin the Third Part 6 is fine. The latest Megaton Musashi episode is episode 10. I could tell that it was going to be exceptionally great since they skipped the usual opening for the sake of, the, of more plot. The staff went all out and did what I consider is my current favorite episode of the season. As the humans and aliens and alien race fight, it's revealed that there are several aliens trying to restore peace between them besides just Arsham, and the identity of them is surprising, but predictable. I made a prediction far back in the beginning of the series that Minami is an alien, and I was right. It wasn't hard to guess since her injecting herself with that environmental adaptation fluid made it obvious besides other hints the viewers got. Now they finally confirmed that she is one and that she has a history with Teru. Teru lost his father and mother in an alien attack, but was saved by Minami in her alien form. Later, Teru would come to brutally face the horrid fact his parents are dead, and Minami forces him to accept the reality and to deal with the situation by staying strong, killing her, or just ending himself. She was brutally harsh on him, and I felt bad for him. After explaining that it was her, her race and not herself who, who did the slaying, she gives him a weapon to get revenge. But Teru is unable to either kill her or himself. But to Manami, she is able to relate to him as she feels the same way. She tells him that she wants the humans and aliens to coexist peacefully. Teru decides, despite what happened to him, that he too wants to follow this path. Though the aliens killed his parents, perhaps he will fight for this for the sake of protecting other kids from having the same fate. After they were shown to have slept together, <laughs> Manami reveals that the, flu that the fluid she is in injecting into herself is losing its effect more and more and that she does not have that much time left. Now, does, th does this apply to Arshim as well? I am very curious. Previously in, in episode 9, Ryogo got lots of character development as his memories began to come back. This is the case for the humans now and it's not just happening to him. Despite that the military had given people false memories and family members, the effects are slowly going away. Not only that, some of the humans, such as Nishina, have grown suspicious as they feel something is off from this perfect and peaceful way of life. To make matters worse, her and others pick up that some of the students like Yamato tend to mysteriously disappear occasionally. What the military do does that it, is, it observes everyone who is under this type of spell, and they select those that seem better suited for combat based on their observations. Once chosen, the kids are given their memories back through machinery, and, they, and thus they pick up the will to fight, if they haven't already, and join in the front lines. Ryugo is the only one that was chosen who did not want his memories back out of fear of the emotional pain it, it will bring. Still, during a fight, he starts to remember. During a fight, he starts to remember and, and realizes his current mom isn't his real one, but, but she knows this as well. And the two have a moment where. His new mom tells him that despite this fact that they are not blood related, they have lived together all this time and that they are still family regardless. This is some great development for Ryugo because I didn't really like his character much before this. This is one of the strengths of Megaton Musashi. Despite that it has so many characters, they make the effort to properly develop each one. There's a colorful and lovable cast of characters as a result. It's not trash like 86 where most of the 86 don't even matter and have been reduced to background characters due to lack of development, and Shin is the only re relevant one when he is not being boring. Reiji is the driver with psychic powers who is reluctant to use them. Growing up in a lab, he is looked upon as weird by his classmates since he developed a strange personality from that. His father adopted him and took an interest in his powers. But he gets frustrated because Reiji rarely uses them and gets outperformed by Yamato's improvisational and very effective battle style. In fact, 
just to get Reiji to join the front lines, he had to use a cat to manipulate Reiji into jumping into the robot. Next week, a brutal, a brutal battle is going to take place between the aliens and humans. Thus, I'm expecting Ray AG to finally, once again, make use of his true power. Another character that recently joined is Takumi. He is a science prodigy with, with a reputation in the field because of how great of a, of a father he is. He wanders into the lab and acts by accident and eventually runs, runs into Fu, uh, Fujisaki, the man with the uh, purple jacket. Fujisaki realizes who Takumi's father is, and once seeing for himself how much of a great scientist Takumi is, decides to take Takumi in to join the, the technology, technology department, as he sees a lot of good use that can come out of it, and Takumi does deliver. Okay, one second. In the recent episode... Tarzan is shown that despite being very serious, he is also very silly as he frequents a coffee shop with maids and hilariously goes along with the act. And he even has one of their pink papers that he gets stamped on every visit for free food. Yeah, that was a really, really funny scene. So Tarzan was depicted as a very serious character. He's always defending Arshim. But in this episode, he... He goes along with the immature side of human culture. Yeah, I think that that's, that's one, one, one way that I could describe it. So, it did very good for his own character development. And it was just very funny how he switches from being very serious to very, uh, very playful. So, I, I really appreciate how they actually made the effort for our bodyguard to become more relevant in the story with development. He meets up with a servant of the queen who was sent to destroy the shelter, as well as Arshim. But this servant grew up with the queen's daughter and refuses to do this. But it's futile, as the queen has replaced him with a new alien and launched the biggest attack yet on the shelter. The queen has no desire whatsoever to coexist with the humans, as Arshim does, and has decided to wipe out the shelter despite that they were supposed to keep, keep it intact so they could research for it. The secrets of, of evolution. And I do not know what that is. I am not sure what they mean by the, the secrets of evolution. So all I can do is just wonder. She knows her daughter has betrayed her. And is actively helping her enemies. As a result, the, the queen ordered her to be killed as well. Sarzan, Arshun's bodyguard, is against this. And wants Arshun to become the new queen. Another focus of, the, of episode 10 is the relationship of Yamato and Arshim. Arshim makes a declaration of love that feels something that she feels something strong in her heart toward towards Yamato. Such as when she saves him. But it seems to go over Yamato's head. He hears her goals of humans reaching a state of peace with the aliens and decides to allow himself to get to know her. They go on what appears to be a date as the two bond having fun all over the city. Unfortunately for them, one of the staff from the military recognized her and would try to kill her in the, in the end of the episode as the cliffhanger. Either way, the two have been wonderful uh, the, uh, the two have many wonderful moments such as going shopping. It was nice to see Arshim wearing human clothing. They also watched a movie, The Totanic, because the copyright they couldn't say Titanic, so they won't, they went with Totanic. <laughs> And then play sports. Somehow Arshim fell down trying to hit a baseball. That was kind of funny. And they also ate ramen, ramen together. It was, it was adorable to see that Arshim didn't know what ramen was. And Yamato teaches her how to eat it. And he t so Yamato eats ramen in a very sloppy way. And has Arshim eat it also in a very sloppy way. But he's being sincere. He just has a very... Rough way of eating. If you could accept that as an answer. Uh, Alright. So. But what happens is that. Arshim cannot handle eating ramen. As violently as Yamato. And she accidentally. Spits some of the ramen in his face. And they both laugh over it. It was a nice wholesome moment. Until the. Until the men, until the men in suits came. 
Imara himself has come to a, has come a long way and is my in his in his my protagonist of the fall season, alongside Teruto from Bill Divide Cold Black. Yamato is lovable and the type to not let naive moral values cloud his judgment, unlike a lot of the other bland and boring protagonists from the from the other fall series anime. He is similar to Yabuki Joe, and even his voice actor sounds like him. I don't think it's a surprise since the director has worked on an anime written by the author of Ashura no Joe. In this recent episode, the soundtrack really shines as well, as many great as many great songs were used, and the character designs are always wonderful and adorable and beautiful. I remember hearing this is going to be too core, but regardless or not, because it's doing so badly as a game, I just cannot wait to see the next episode. Thank you for listening.